Today, that's the same thing that we're doing spiritually speaking. Baptism is a watery grave. It is a funeral. It is about something that has died and is being buried. Paul said in Romans 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. <laughs> Baptism is all about burying something. It's all about making a declaration that something has died and is being buried so that something new can come. I'm going to mess with some of your theology real quick if I can because there are two groups of people being baptized today. The first group are those who are baptizing their past life of sin. Some of these, including a cousin of mine, two of them, have just recently been saved. And what they are doing is they are making a public declaration that they are in covenant with Jesus Christ. Them being baptized today is a declaration that they have died to the past. That the old man has died and that this morning new life has come. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new. And today there are individuals, go ahead, give the Lord praise. Because there are people today who just a year ago they were sons or daughters of the devil. But this morning they are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Just a year ago there were people who were bound in sin. But Jesus found them at the hill called Calvary. They were washed in the blood. And today they are bearing their past life of the flesh. And they are declaring I'm a new man or I'm a new woman in Jesus Christ. I'm not who I used to be. I'm somebody new. My past has been buried and I'm a new creature in Jesus Christ. That's our first group but there's a second group today who's being baptized for a completely different reason. There are individuals who are being baptized today that they have been saved for years and they have actually been baptized before but they have something in their life they want to bury. Here's where I'm going to mess with you. I do not believe baptism should be a one-time occurrence. We always think that baptism should just be at the initial act of salvation. But I believe baptism is something that we should do as often as we need to bury something. In Jewish tradition, Jewish priests, before they ever entered the temple, would dip into a pool called a mikvah to symbolically cleanse themselves and remove things from their life that would hinder them from walking with the Lord. I believe that baptism is something that we should do any time that we feel like there's something in our lives that needs to be buried and washed out. There's one young lady, and I will not tell her name because I didn't ask her permission, but I will tell you she shared her testimony with me. She was one time uh, in a covenant with the Lord, but a season of her life led her down a road of rebellion, led her down a road of backsliddenness, and she distanced herself from God. But about a year ago, or just a, few, a little bit longer than that, God drew her back in. And she rededicated her life. And today she's being rebaptized as a covenant that she's come back to the Lord and that she's washing away that past of shame and of sin and of guilt and of, uh, of wantonness and of rebellion to the Lord. But there's another person, and I don't have to ask her permission because she's got to love me, but my mother. I'm getting to baptize my mother today. She's been baptized before when I was a little boy, but whether she knows this or not, she is burying a season of her life. She just come out of a season of grief, a season of loss, a season of depression, a season of wondering, God, what are you doing with me? But Sister Betty, she made a covenant with God. Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. 
And today she is choosing to bury that season of her life through baptism so that she can begin a new season with the Lord. So let me ask you, is there anything in your life today that you need to bury? Because I'll tell you, I have 11 people lined up, but I have prayed that at least four people would be convicted today to say, I didn't sign up, but I want to be baptized. I have four towels here for you that I brought from my home. Because I believe there's more than just 11 people who have something they need to bury. Maybe it's a season of unforgiveness. Maybe it's a season of rebellion. Maybe it's a season of brokenness and shame. Whatever the season is, I'm here to tell you that God can wash that away. I don't believe that this water has any power in and of itself. But I do believe that this water, when symbolically touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, can do something in your innermost being that when you come out of that water, you will walk in a new season of life. You will walk in a new mindset and you will walk in a new person. Paul said that we should walk in newness of life. Newness means to renew. You know what renew means? To make new again. To restore to the original condition. There are some of you who have been marred by sin and marred by seasons of life. Many of them are being baptized today. And they're saying, I'm going to walk in a renewed mindset, a renewed life. So do you have something you need to die to today? If so, this grave is for you. There's 11 people today who are going to be put in this grave. And in three seconds, they're going to be resurrected to newness of life. And I'm so thankful you're here to witness that. Before we get started, I want us to pray that God would bless this. And as soon as I'm done praying, we're going to have little Bella come and be our first baptism. But I want you to just pray and stretch your hands towards this baptismal and pray for those participating as we get ready to do this. Father, I thank you for the opportunity, for the privilege to baptize your people. Lord, I thank you for these, that Father, who are being baptized for the first time. Father, those who are being baptized once again, who are making a covenant with you, Lord, that they want to wash something away. God, I'm so thankful for this opportunity as the shepherd of this house to baptize these 11 people. And Father, for those today who may have come and say, you know what, I want to be baptized. I pray that, Father, before this day is over, that they will come and bury whatever they need to bury in this grave. Lord, we love you. And we thank you. Lord, let transformation happen in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all go ahead. Just right there. Sit down. There you go. Is that okay? You okay? been waiting for this a long time, hadn't you, Miss Bella? You love the Lord, don't you? Just hold my arm and take, put one on your nose. I'm... Father, we thank you for Miss Bella. Lord, I thank you for this life, and I thank you, Lord, for this transformation in her that you've done. Father, we're thankful for this walk, and we pray that God, after this, that, Lord, she will go into her school and that she will be a beacon of your light to her classmates and to her teachers. And, Father, I count it a privilege today to baptize Bella in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just 
sit down. You weren't so sure about this water, were you? <laughs> Is it too cold? Well, we'll make it quick. Making you love the Lord, don't you? You want, me to tell, you want to tell the people anything he's done for you? Okay, I won't make you. Okay. Stretch your hands this way. Father, hold my arm right here and put one on your nose. Put the other one on your nose. Father, I thank you today for making. I thank you, Lord, for his life. God, I thank you for the plan that you have for him. Lord, whatever it is, we know that today will begin the start of it, something new. And Father, today I thank you for him, and I count it a privilege to baptize making in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You all right? I like that shower cap. I believe I'm going to need me one of those for the day. I don't want to get my hair messed up. Miss Emma, you love the Lord, don't you? You want to tell anybody what he's done for you? You want to talk to him? Okay, I won't make you. I just grab my arm. You want to see it? That way I can dunk you back easier. They're going to be okay? All right. And put one on your nose. Put that other hand on your nose. You'll be all right. Father, I thank you for Miss Emma. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And Lord, I thank you for this life. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in her and for the testimonies that's going to come out of this. And Lord, I count it a privilege to baptize Emma in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You okay? long. I know it's cold on you. Yeah. But Brandon, you love the Lord, don't you? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to baptize you. Yeah. Stretch your hands this way. Father, hold my arm right here. Father, we thank you for Brandon. We thank you, Lord, for God, his life and for his family. Lord, I ask that God, that you begin to heal him now. And Lord, as he is baptized, that God, you begin to help him walk in newness of life. And Father, today I count it a privilege to baptize my brother Brandon in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. not going to make you talk because I know that that is not what you like to do. But I know that you love the Lord and I know that this is a big step and I'm so thankful that I get to baptize you and your husband and I believe that today is going to God's going to begin to do something new in your life. I believe that today you're not just being baptized as a sign that you've been saved but as to bury some of the things the enemy's been trying to put against you and your family. So I believe today is going to begin a new walk for you. 
a new walk from Brandon and today when you go home there's going to be a new atmosphere and that tomorrow it's going to be like something totally new has been done in your life and in your family. I believe it. Father, hold my arm right here. Father, I thank you for Michelle. I thank you, Lord, for this life. I thank you, Lord, for their friendship. And God, today, I ask that you would do something new in her home, in her life, in her marriage. And God, as she comes out of this water, let her be a new woman. And I count it a privilege today to baptize Michelle in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Miss Melissa, I'm glad to be able to do this for you. She's one of those, she told me I've been baptized before, so don't hold me under too long. <laughs> and I promised her I wouldn't, but I'm thankful that I get to do this today. And I know you love the Lord, and I know that you are seeking to walk with Him every day. And so I'm honored to be able to do this for you. So hold this for me, if you'll hold my arm right here. Just put one on your nose now, or you can do that. Father, I thank you today for Miss Melissa. Thank you, Lord, for this family, and I thank you, God, for this walk that she is striving to have with you every day. Lord, today I ask that you'll begin something new in her life in this moment. And God, I count it an honor to baptize Sister Melissa in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> young ladies that's getting baptized again and I'm so thankful that she counted me worthy to be able to do that. Hannah and Josh are some of our new people, some of our new friends and uh, Hannah I'm so thankful and uh, is it okay if I tell the secret? Is it okay? And I'm not only baptizing her but I'm baptizing the child that is within her uh, because she is uh, And I don't know he or she, I hope I'm here long enough to baptize them again. But I'm so thankful today. So I want you to stretch your hands this way. Father, I thank you for Hannah. I thank you, Lord, for her friendship and God for her life and for what she's doing, Lord, for you. Father, today I ask that you'd bless her and that God, as she comes out of this water, that she would walk in a newness of life like she has never felt before. Now, Father, I count it a privilege to baptize Hannah in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You okay? I didn't pull you back to the bar, did I? Brother 
Ronnie. He's ready to go. He said, just go ahead and dump me under. Here, we'll, we'll go ahead. Hold my arm, Brother Ronnie. Father, I thank you for Brother Ronnie. I thank you, Lord, for his life. And Father, I count it a privilege today to baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You okay, Brother Ronnie? I made my family go last because I didn't want people to think I was partial. But this is my first cousin, Sonny, and she has just recently begun a walk with the Lord. Um, and has. And if I gave her the microphone, she might would talk. I don't know. Do you want to tell them anything the Lord's done for you? Okay. But I, and let me tell you, if God, if God can save, and I'm not saying she was the worst of the worst, but if God can save her, don't you give up praying for your lost family members. Because not only did she get saved, but her daughter who's coming after her got saved in the same few time span. And so I'm honored today to be able to do this, not as just a pastor, but as a cousin and as a family member. So I want you to stretch your hands this way. Just hold my arm here and put the other one on your nose. Father, I thank you today for Sonny. God, I'm so thankful to be able to do this, Father, as a family member and as a pastor. And God, I thank you for the new life that she's living for you. And God, don't let it stop now. I pray that when she comes out of this water that she'll, her body might be chilled, but her soul will be on fire for what you want to do in her. Father, I thank you and I count it a privilege today to baptize Sonny in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And this is her daughter, Nevaeh. Heaven spelt backwards. And I, well, Nevaeh, I've known her since she was born. And so this is just a, well, it's not a bittersweet moment, it's a sweet moment. And I'm so thankful, Nevaeh, to be able to baptize. You love the Lord, don't you? You want to tell him anything he's done for you? That's okay. I'm the only talker in the family. That's okay. <laughs> Just grab my arm right here and put the other one on your nose. Father, I thank you for Nevaeh. Thank you, Lord, for this walk that she's begun with you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in her life. That, Father, she goes to school, she's going to be a witness that Jesus is real, that Jesus saves, and that Jesus can change anybody's life and change anybody's heart. Father, today I thank you for Nevaeh and this life and this walk with the Lord that she has. And, God, I count it a privilege to baptize her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You okay? It is cold. It's cold. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is my mother. And uh, she said, I want to be baptized by you just because you're my son. And so I'm thankful that I get to do that because not everybody gets the opportunity to baptize one of their parents. But um, I know you love the Lord. And I, I don't have to ask you that. And I, like I said, today she's being baptized to bury something. Um, unfortunately, 17 months ago, we buried my dad. And when we buried him, she buried 20, what, 25 years? 27. 27 years of her life. And she never thought she could ever push forward. But here we are, 17 months later. God's given her an eight-month-old, a nine-month-old grandbaby, two twins on the way. And God has done so much more. And she's told God and she's told me, God, whatever you want to do, 
Um, I said, if you're praying another man in your life, you better ask me first. Uh, <laughs> but right now, she's only dating Jesus. So she's in love with Jesus, rather. She's not dating him. She's in love with him. But I'm so thankful today. And so I, I want you to stretch your hands this way. You know how pastor does it. Father, I thank you today for my mother. And I thank you, Lord, for her walk with you. And I thank you, Lord, for her recommitment, God, to do whatever you've called her to do. Father, today is her son. God is the minister of the family. I count it an honor and a privilege to bury this season of her life and to see her resurrected anew. And Lord, today I thank you and I baptize my mom in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You okay? she's going to get on to me, but this is my 82-year-old grandmother. Um, who <laughs> and so uh, this woman has literally, we say she is the bionic woman. Uh, we're pretty sure that cats don't have nine lives, but she does. And so we're burying a lot today. Um, but we're so, I'm so thankful as her grandson, as the only minister of the family to be able to do this. So I'm going to hurry because I know if I keep her in this cold water too long, it's going to be bad. So just hold my arm, Granny. And I'm going to put this on your face. Father, I thank you for Granny. I thank you, Lord, for, this, for the life that you've given her. Father, for the health and the vitality. And Lord, I count it an honor and a privilege today to baptize Granny in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You okay? We got one that just wants to be baptized. Usually I would say this concludes it, but I was just told we have one person that has walked in today who wants to be baptized. And so go ahead, give the Lord praise for that. So this is your opportunity. If you say, I need to be baptized today, if the Holy Spirit has moved on your, on your heart, I have four towels up here. I don't have a change of clothes for you, but I do believe that if today God is going to do something in your life, I've prayed this all week, and so if there's any more, now's your opportunity. Y'all go ahead and sing while they get them ready, and if you decide you want to, just come on up. Go ahead.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All I want to do is lay my last your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Adrian, I'm so glad that you are here this morning and I get this privilege. You love the Lord, don't you? Yes. You want to tell anybody what he's done for you? Okay. All right. If you will stretch your hands this way. Just grab my arm. Father, I thank you for Miss Adrian. I thank you, Lord, for this life. And I thank you, Lord, for this decision. Father, to bury whatever it is, to bury a past of sin, to bury a past of hurt and bitterness. And Father, to declare she is walking in newness of life today. And Lord, I count an honor and a privilege to baptize Adrian in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You okay? All right. Is there anybody else? Anybody else feel like you just need to wash something away? Now's your opportunity. All right, if not, let's stand and let's worship the Lord for just a few more minutes. Go ahead and sing.
hallelujah, hallelujah. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Can we give God some praise this morning and thank him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't even know how to transition out of that. I'm so thankful for the baptism. So thankful for all of our guests. And I do want to invite you, if you are not already plugged in and committed to a home church, uh, the second time you come, you're no longer a guest, you're family. Um, and so I would love to, uh, I would love, go ahead, give them praise for that. But I don't want you leaving your home church. Uh, we do not proselyte members. Uh, we, they, you stay at your home church as long as the Lord allows. Um, but we thank you for being here today. Um, and I, I hope that you congratulate those who were baptized. If you see someone who was baptized, pat them on the back, hug their neck, tell them how proud of them that you are, and just encourage them. Let me, let me say this before we close. Did you notice that there were only... Let's see. There were only three people that I know of who were over, I'm sorry, four people who were over the age of 40. Did you notice that? That means, older generation, we need mothers and fathers. I can only do so much as the shepherd. I see these young people twice, once, maybe twice a week. So I need mothers and fathers to gather around these young men and these young women, and I need you to pour into them. Brother Philip, you and Sister Lucy, that's been your ministry. I need you to pour into them, Sister Lucy. I need you to just hold them up. Sister Anita, I, I need the mothers. Betty, I need the mothers to pour into these people and let them know the road may be rough. Hell may be, may be coming against them, but it's worth it in the end. Because he said, he who endures to the end shall... Be saved. So I need some mothers and fathers. I need some mothers and fathers, and I need some sons and daughters. If you're below the age of 40, or if you're 40 or whatever, and you see those others, adults, we need you to be their brothers, be their sisters, be their, be their Aaron and their her. When Moses was on the mountain and the Israelites were fighting, Brother Philip, it said, as long as Moses' hands stayed raised, Israel prevailed. But if his hands ever went down, the enemy prevailed. So guess what? The battle is tough right now. Satan knows his time is short and he's fighting every one of us but we need to rally around one another and hold each other's hands up and say I'm going to hold your arms up until the battle's won I'm going to hold your arms up until the enemy is defeated I'm going to hold your arms up until we see victory because victory is just in arm's reach we've got to hold one another up and we've got to let each other know we're not in this battle alone we're not fighting by ourselves we're all in one army and we're marching forward like a mighty army. We're going to march till Jesus comes. And when he comes, we're coming out of here in a cloud of great glory and we win. Somebody give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, she cut out of a whole shot. Woo! Go ahead, give him some praise. The glory just entered the room. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I won't preach. Because I know it's 12 o'clock. And I know some of you, if you're a regular here, you know we don't get out till 1230. So this is a privilege today, but next Sunday it won't be that way. 
But I love each and every one of you. Even if I just met you for the first time, I love you. I appreciate you being here. And as I said earlier, if you're not plugged into a church, we would count it our honor and a privilege to welcome you into our home and for me to be your pastor. But I want you to take somebody by the hand, whether you came with them or not, and I want us to pray with one another. I want to pray for protection. I want to pray for encouragement. And uh, I want us to pray for every one of these individuals who was baptized today, that they walk out of this church today with that newness and all of that past washed off their lives. Let's pray and then you're dismissed. Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you, Lord, for all the regulars and all of the individuals who come today for this baptism. I thank you, Lord, for the move of the Holy Ghost and for what you have done for each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for each of these individuals who were baptized and who have walked into a new season of life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that if they're not already full of the Holy Ghost, that you would baptize baptize them in the Holy Ghost and let them receive that evidence of speaking with other tongues. Lord, today we pray that you would go before them and prepare the way and that, Father, as the church family, we would lift them up and we would hold up their arms and we would encourage them that the battle is already won. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus and we shall overcome. Father, today I pray over your flock. I pray over every individual here. I ask that, God, you would bless the weak that is ahead of them. Father, go before them. Destroy every snare and destroy every weapon of the enemy. And Father, let them have a blessed week. We pray that you would send angels charge over each and every one of them. That you would hedge them before and be behind so that no enemy can touch their lives. And Father, I ask that you would bless them and keep them. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious unto them. Turn your countenance towards them, Lord, and give them your peace. In the name of Jesus Christ we declare and proclaim it and the church said amen and amen you're dismissed in the name of the Lord God bless you y'all go ahead did that. So glad. That's no problem. They're just a beach towel. We ain't going to the beach for a year, so you're good. Good to see you this morning. I, I met him Father's Day. I sure did. Good to see you this morning. I appreciate you. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, Did you Papa. come out dry or wet? Well, my arms come out wet, but I come out dry this time. I was time. thinking I was going to go to the creek or something. Well, we, we thought about it, but we figured it might be too cold this well, time of year. Be, so. It was good. Good. <laughs> Good, I appreciate it. Good to see you, you Mr. Jeff. You, you, you like to live dangerous, don't you? Who that? You, you like to live dangerous. I do like to live you know, dangerous. It's, it's hard to get this many Jacksons and that many Wiggins and all of them at the same time. I got you. <laughs> so good to see you this morning.